Hello and welcome to You So You. My name's Zoe and this is my channel all about the crafty bits and pieces I get up to. I knit, I sew, I spin on a drop spindle, I dabble in weaving from time to time and anything else that takes my crafty fancy. But today we're talking about the things I've been working on in June. So grab a brew, put your feet up and let's get started. Welcome back to any returning viewers and to any new viewers, a very warm welcome to you. As I mentioned at the opening to this video, we're looking at the things I've been working on in June today. So uh, yeah, let's get going with what I am wearing. This is an older finished object. This is the Calais shirt, which is, I believe, Closet Core. I'll pop the name on the screen for you. And this is in a Minerva fabric jungle print. And I do have an, a post on the Minerva website about this shirt, so feel free to go and check that out if you want some more information. Um, I've done the sort of waistish length version for uh, this one. And uh, yeah, it's nice and comfy in warm weather. It's smart enough for the office um, at this length and probably the sort of sl a slightly longer shirt length would work. Um, and it comes with this shirt dress option as well, which if I belted it, I'd feel kind of office ready, but uh, unbelted, I'd probably feel a bit more casual. Um, so yeah, so I can see me making a few more of these for warmer weather. Um, so yeah, so that's that. Now moving on to this month's finished objects, and we've got a few. First of all, one that I've just finished this morning. Well, I say just finished. All the sewing is done. And that is the Truffle Coat by Lara Sadler, um, which I've made in a Minerva fleece-backed soft shell. So this is part of the Minerva Brand Ambassadors program. Um, so full disclosure, they sent me the fabric, I've made the project, I didn't pay for the fabric. Um, I've been meaning to make a coat for a while, and I thought this one looked like it'd be quite simple. It's taken me a lot longer than I thought it would. Um, yes, it's simple shapes, and grading it out to my circumference was, was fine, uh, because the shapes are quite straightforward, I just needed to add on a few inches. Um, because I am larger than the largest size in the pattern. So to make sure that I've got enough wearing ease to put jumpers and stuff underneath. All I did was I kept the sleeves the same because obviously my sleeve, my arms are not too huge. Um, and I just extended the width a little bit um, on the side seams. So I kept the raglan length the same uh, and all the neckline stuff the same. Yes, I know. Um, I did add a bit of height to the hood. Mostly because I quite like larger hoods. I have a lot of hair and if you have a lot of hair you will know that if your hair is up in certain positions you can't put a hood up unless it's a larger hood. So I did extend it by inch and a half, two inches um, in height just to accommodate the hair um, and that's worked quite well. Now the pattern is written as a fully lined coat. I haven't lined it because the fabric is fleece back, so I didn't feel like I needed the lining in it. Um, so what I've done instead is I have bias bound all of the seams. I've stitched down, top stitched down, the raglan uh, seams and the hood seams and where the hood joins at the neck. Um, but other than that, I've just done as written with the addition of hemming the, the bottom of the, the coat and the, the sleeves because obviously with the lining you're, you're bagging it out. Um, so that's done except for one thing. I've put in a loop of ribbon at the back so I can hang it up and I've put in most of the snaps. What I haven't done so far is put the half of the snaps that go down, not on the flap but on the, the actual coat bit. Um, mostly because as warm, it's a heavy project to be working on at the sewing machine. Um, I'm probably not going to be doing them up very much anyway, so there's no great rush to get them put on, but they're a bit of a mission to install. It involves an awl and a hammer and lots of noise, so I'm going to leave that for another time. Uh, I'm not going to need the coat much, I wouldn't have thought, until probably September, October, possibly November, because it is quite a warm coat, uh, even though it's quite thin. Uh, and it does have layers underneath to put um, jumpers on. So I can see me wearing it open quite a lot. Um, so yeah, so that, that's done, that's ready. Um, glad I've done it. 
I think it's going to be a little while before I recover from making that before I tackle a slightly more complicated coat because even that simple one was far more involved than I thought it was going to be partly because of not doing the lining and I didn't quite think through some of the finishes I'd kind of assumed that the the hood would come all the way around to the top of the flaps for the the cover and what have you um, and it didn't so I went and looked back at the photos from the pattern and it doesn't in the in the photos either um, so my bad um, which meant I didn't have as much seam allowance left across the top in that gap between the flap and the the hood to finish it as neatly as I would have liked but it's not a big issue um, it doesn't really notice when it's being worn so it's fine um, so yeah so that's that's done um, coat will happen again at some point uh, something a bit more tailored maybe uh, a bit more sort of wool type material and um, but this one should be a good uh, autumny type uh, spring type when I need a coat because it's not quite warm yet that kind of weather um, I don't think it's going to handle you know heavy snowfalls and that kind of thing but spring showers eight autumn showers will be fine um, so yeah, so that's that, that's that done. And I do have some other finished objects to show you, but they are not knitting, they are not dressmaking, they're not weaving, they're not spinning, they're not anything like that. Uh, I took part in the Rebecca Page Embroidery Summit um, in June, which is a free online event. Um, Rebecca Page runs various different summits throughout the, the year, that, or she has been running with different summits throughout the year, where you can access them for free and access all the video classes for like 24 hours and she has the option of, of paying for, for lifetime access to them. Um, I've previously watched some of the videos from the Quilting Summit uh, and the next one coming up I believe is Papercraft in August. So they run for five days and on the free option, yes, as I say, you get 24 hours to watch your classes. Um, so obviously I haven't done everything because when you've only got 24 hours to, to watch everything there's only so much you can do. But there were a few embroidery techniques that I wanted to have a go at. So I've, I picked those classes um, plus one or two extras. It's got a bit of fluff um, on here. The first one that I did was some ribbon embroidery. Uh, obviously this is now needs pressing and framing because I've taken it out of the hoop. Um, but that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. It can be a bit tough to get the ribbon through the fabric, particularly when it's a tight weave like this cotton. Um, but... The actual stitches are quite basic, so that was good. The next project that I did was another technique that I've wanted to try for a while, and that's 3D embroidery. This one I've got left in the hoop at the moment. So that was this bee and flower project. If I turn it that way, you can see how much the bee and the flowers actually stand out from the fabric. So that was, again, so much simpler than I thought it was going to be. But really enjoyable so I'm really pleased with that one. I've of course got no idea what I'm going to do with these embroideries and to, but I've got them, they're done. Uh, the next project I wanted to have a go at it was embroidering onto a photograph but you needed to print it out and my printer has decided it's one of these ones where it orders the ink for you itself but it's decided that the ink cartridges are not going to talk to the printer and the company that I have it through um, they're not going to send out any ink until I get my cartridges to talk to my printer and I don't know how to do that. I think I'm going to have to buy some new cartridges rather than waiting for them to send them out because they're not going to send them out until it's fixed and they won't come and fix it for me. Um, to, it's an old printer, it's, it, yeah. Um, so I'll probably buy some ink for that and see if that make, fixes it and uh, go from there. Um, so rather than actually stitching onto a, a photograph or a printout, I just took some cardstock and uh, practiced how to stitch on paper. Um, if you remember when you were little and you've been taught hand-eye coordination, you might have been given cards in school with a thick plastic needle and some wool. That's basically what this is, but you're putting in the holes yourself and you're positioning them where you want them to be. Um, so that was fun, and I can see me doing that for a few special photos and making displays and that kind of thing. Obviously printouts of the photos not the original, I'm not going to destroy old family photos um, in case I mess it up, so I'll print them out. And I've got some of, of, my, of my grandmother and my, well, my, both my, my grandparents on my dad's side that I think would work really well for it. 
Um, the photos of my grand my grandparents on my mother's side are much more modern, but they still work. Um, but my dad's parents met at, towards the end of World War Two, and um, so we've got some nice photos of them when they were uh, just married and. Um, he said, well, got married at the end of World War II. I think they, met, they must have met slightly before that, only the 40s. Um, but yeah, we've got some nice photos from the 40s of my, my dad's parents uh, that I think would lend themselves to that kind of thing if I get some printouts. Um, we've got one of one of my dad's grandmothers as well, which I think would lend itself very well to, to that kind of treatment. Um, and there's always Google image search, public domain images and things. Um, so yeah, so I can see me doing more of that kind of thing for stuff to go on the wall, maybe in the craft room, maybe around the rest of the house. And the final project that I took part in for the Embroidery Summit was called Design Your Own Embroidery Stitches. It's basically doodling with, with uh, embroidery thread. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that I've designed the stitches as such because you're basically using straight stitches and French knots. So I've not created the basics of the stitch. Um, what I have done is worked out how I want to combine them together. Um, so there was a pattern that we could use if we wanted to or we could create our own and then you fill it in with different um, designs. So that is my project for the design your own embroidery stitches. As I say, it's, it's straight stitches and French knots so I've, I've not sort of reinvented the wheel. Um, I've just combined them in a way that I thought would look okay. Um, so yeah, so lots of, of embroidery has been happening in June. So that was nice. Uh, it's a, a nice little craft to do. As a break from some of the other crafts that, I'm, that I do, so a break from knitting, so as, as you're probably aware if you've been around this channel for a while, my knitting mojo uh, has been a little bit off kilter. Um, it's not completely non-existent, um, but it's just not as to the forefront as it was previously. It'll come back, it, it ebbs and flows, these things do. So having the embroidery is a nice sort of palette cleanser, if you like. And it is also something that you can do in front of the TV. It does, it's not noisy like the sewing machine. Um, so it doesn't like, interfere with anybody else's enjoyment of what's going on. And you can still have conversations and you end up with pretties. So yay, we like that. So that's all my finished objects. So let's take a look at works in progress. Now I was talking about my knitting mojo. As I say, it's not completely run away. It's not missing in action. It's just a bit lethargic at the moment. Um, now, I had quite a lot of yarn left over from my Terra Nova sweater, um, which I've been meaning to make for ages, and I knew when I bought the yarn for it that I was going to have way too much yarn for the project. I didn't use the yarn specified in the pattern, I went with the Knitpix palette instead because that was less cost for more yarn. So I would have had leftovers if I'd have used the yarn that was called for in the pattern, uh, but because they come in 25 gram little nuggets, um, there wouldn't have been as much left over as there was for the 50 gram skeins that I got from Nitpix. Um, so a lot more left over than the spin drift would have been, um, which I figured was a good thing. Number one, it cost me less to buy the yarn in the first place. So it saved me a bit of money there. And number two, I knew that I would have enough leftovers to get another garment out of that yarn. So I've started another garment. Now, uh, just making sure I'm not losing any stitches. I am modifying this pattern. I have some sweaters that fit. Uh, um, there seems to be some sort of workman street cleaner or something outside the house. Hopefully that's not too, too distracting. Uh, so I have quite a few sweaters. I don't have cardigans that fit. I can just sort of throw on, which I think for summer and autumn and spring is, is a good sort of option to have. So it's a bit scrunched up on the, the needles at the moment, but I am working on a flax light that I am going to steek into a cardigan. So I've got my, my steek stitches in there and I'm striping in the different colors from the Terra Nova. There are 15 different colors in the Terra Nova. So I am using up as many as I need to knit a cardigan. Um, I'm just sort of stri striping it in and just keep going until I run out of that colour and then moving on to the next one. I am also going to modify it a little bit further. I'm still working on the raglan increases at the moment. I'm not as far as separating for the sleeves. Um, so I'm going to finish the increases and do the short rows that 
come with the additional PDF with the flax light pattern. So you do that before you separate. Then I'm not actually going to separate. Controversial, I know. I'm not going to separate for the sleeves because I don't want to have to try and guesstimate how much yarn to have left to stripe the sleeves and have them match the body. So I am going to insert steak panels like this at the point where I would be separating for the sleeves. That way I can just knit round, use the yarn up as I'm doing here, and um, the stripes will match the sleeves and the body exactly. I won't have to faff around with working out how much yarn to leave, so I won't run the risk of having leftovers from what is meant to be a using up leftovers project, um, and I won't run out before I get to the length that I need. So I will be doing a video on how I'm steaking the sleeves, and um, because obviously once I've finished and got it to length, I'm going to need to steak them and seam them to turn it into something wearable. Um, so that will be coming, but it will be a gradual process because I will be filming bits as I get to them in the knit. So hopefully over the course of the next couple of months, that will be done. I'm not going to say that I'll get it done in July, A, because knitting mojo is on a go slow, um, but also because it's tour de fleece. So I'm going to be doing a lot of spinning over the next uh, few weeks because uh, that starts today. Today's the 1st of July, so it'll be yesterday for you because this will go up on Saturday morning. Um, but yeah, today's the first day of Tour de Fleece. So with that in mind, my next work in progress is a spinning project. I know I haven't done this all today. Uh, this is my DK spin. So I now have three plies of DK, or three, or three plies of what I hope will be a DK yarn, spun up and ready to ply. I finished that last night. So one of the things I'm going to do for Tour de Fleece is ply this up and get that video done, uh, the part two of my DK on a spindle video um, done for you. So that'll be coming in the next couple of weeks. Um, so yeah, so that's good to go. And it means I can start spinning the new fibre, which is hovering here. So let's take a look at my Tour de Fleece plans and look at some fibre. Uh, there will be some crinkling and rustling as I'm getting the fibre out because some of it's in plastic bags, some of it's covered in tissue paper. If you're wearing headphones, I'm sorry. So, so for my birthday, my dad and my stepmom got me a voucher for the local yarn shop called Perlero. Um, it's quite, it's new to the town, but it's not a new yarn store. It used to be in another town. So they have a small selection of fibre in store, so I used um, my voucher to buy some sock yarn and to buy some fibre for Tour de Fleece. So the fibre that I got from them is from Magpie and Goblin. Both I've got two fibres that I bought, bought there, both are by Magpie and Goblin. This first one is a bat, so we've got some different colours in there um, and a bit of a gradient, red gradient going on. This is a blend of BFL, Merino, Corridale, Mohair, Shetland, Sari Silk, Firestar, Angelina and Silk Noir. It's called Queen of Hearts and it's 95 grams. So this is one of the things that I will be aiming to have spun up during Tour de Fleece. Uh, the other fibre that I got from Perlero is the same fibre provider, so still Magpie and Goblin, it's in a plastic bag, so bear with me. Okay, and we have some Rolags in this purple, pink and orange colourway. So this is Corridale, Silk, BFL and Firestar. I have 75 grams of this. There isn't a name for this colourway on the packaging. Um, but yeah, so these are another thing that I'm aiming to... Oh, sorry, sorry, crinkle, crinkle, rustle, rustle. Uh, so this is another fibre that I am planning to get spun up during Tour de Fleece. So that's three things so far. Applying my DK spin, the bat and the Rolags. The Rolags I'm going to do is apply on the fly, at least that's my plan, is to apply it on the fly, do a chain ply with them so that I can manage the colour. 
Um, I might ply on the fly with the other fibres I spin up. We will see. How quite decided. Yes, Leo, fibre. No, you can't jump up on it. I'm talking to the people. Um, so that's the initial stuff for Tour de Fleece. But the other target I had in mind for this year's Tour de Fleece was to spin something that's not... Yes, okay. Something that's not wool-based. Get out of the fibre. Um, so I put in an order with World of Wool. And when you're buying fibre online, you may as well buy a few bits rather than just one or two. So I have a box here with tissue paper of bits and pieces that I got from World of Wool. That's a rustle. So World of Wool is a nice affordable fibre su supplier. Yes. If you're looking for blended fibre, um, they don't really do much in the, in sort of the, the hand dyed fibre uh, type um, supplies. So um, one thing that did annoy me, <laughs> and that always annoys me when the stuff from World of Wool comes, they don't write the fibre content on the labels. So I've gone through the website and done that myself. Yes, I know, I'm talking to the people. Yeah, I'll give you fusses in, I'll give you fusses in a minute when I'm done. Um, so I have some Banana Llama Ding Dong, which is this yellow and white. I'm gonna leave these ones in the uh, plastic packaging. This is actually their comic relief fibre. So for every kilo of this they sell, they're donating two pounds to comic relief. Um, it comes in 100 grams. Everything I've got here, all of the blended fibres I've got here are 100 gram bumps. Yes, Leo, I know. Uh, so this one is banana, llama, bamboo, and charolais. So it has got some wool content, but it's largely non-wool fibre. I also have this kind of orangey green, which is fine apple. That's a pineapple bamboo superwash merino. So again, it's got some wool content and some non-wool content. Next up is hickory dickory, which is greens and pinks and yellows. So this is a merino bamboo. The next one is a merino stellina. So again, these two are wool based. Uh, so this is called over the rainbow. So it's quite muted rainbow tones. That's going to mute down even more as they spin it up. And um, that's the thing with the, the blended fibers, they will mute a bit as they spin. Um, but I'll have quite a bit of sparkle to it, so that's lovely. Um, the next is a merino sari silk stellina and tensile. So some wool content, some not wool content. This is called Sprinkly Winkly by Phoebe. And they get some of their uh, team to design some of the fibres and they, they invite people in sometimes to design it too. So Sprinkly Winkly is uh, basically hundreds and thousands colours uh, with some sparkle in it. And the final blended fibre that I've got is a, a pure merino, so wool based. Uh, and it's Sakura by Lauren. I believe Sakura is the Japanese for cherry blossom. I'm not 100% on that, but I think that's what it is. That, that's what my head is telling me. So we've got pinks and chocolatey browns in that one. So that's lovely. The final thing that I got is to do with this wanting to spin something that's not wool based. So I've got some wool and non wool based blends here. So some of those I might get as far as spinning up during Tour de Fleece. It is only 21 days, we will see. Um, but I picked up their Curious collection. Annoyingly, inside this plastic bag, they're, they're loose. They're not individually wrapped inside. And the names of the fibres is on the big bag that they're in and not on their individual bundles. Uh, there's 25 grams each of various non-wool fibres here. So we've got Himalayan nettle, rose, banana, milk protein, mint, Pearl, pineapple, and injeo corn. Injeo corn? Injeo? I don't know what sort of corn that is, but it's corn. So that's all non wool based fibre. So I'll definitely be spinning up some of those. Uh, so, yeah, so the, the aim for Tour de Fleece for me this year is to spin about 300 grams. Um, so, not all of this is going to get spun during Tour de Fleece and you know what that's absolutely fine. I very rarely top up my fibre stash 
it's usually around Tour de Fleece time. It's like I generally top of my sock stash at sock madness time. Um, so it's not like I'm buying fibre all the time. So having some in stashes is, is not a bad thing. Um, I'll get through what I get through in July and the rest will be spread out across the course of the year. So my goals for Tour de Fleece are to spin up 300 grams there or thereabouts. Uh, so three 100 grams-ish skeins. I want to do one from a bat, one that's chain ply, and one that's got non-wool fibre in it. Um, there, there can be crossover. I'm not saying I can't chain ply my bat, I'm not saying I can't chain ply my non-wool fibre, um, but that, that's my aim, a total of three skeins of around about 100 grams. Now, I will also be plying up my John Arban fibre to see if I can get that DK weight. I'm not going to count that as one of those three skeins. Um, at least my plan is not to count that as one of my three skeins. We'll see how I feel at the end of Tour de Fleece. Uh, the reason being, most of the spinning of that has been done before Tour de Fleece started. So it doesn't really tell me what I can achieve in the time frame if I include it. Um, so that will be like an added extra. Um, they'll count towards like rest days or transfer day, that sort of thing. So we'll see how far I get. But yeah, that's the plan. And whilst I was talking about my fibre in Tour de Fleece, I actually realised there was one uh, work in progress that I hadn't shown you. And it's sitting right here, hidden by my box of fibre. Um, and that is my Inkle Loom. Um, if you are a regular viewer, you will have seen that I recently did a video responding to a question that I'd had on a video about the inklet loom. Uh, somebody had asked me if you could use tablets or weaving cards or weaving tablets on the inklet loom. And I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure if there'd be enough space in here, so I had a go. And I'll link to the video where I show you me having a go. It's really badly woven. The tension is all over the place. Um, because I haven't tablet, done any tablet weaving for a long time. So I'm going to keep practicing on that. Um, I don't know if I'll get much done on it during July, so you're not going to see it for a little while. You're not going to see it until I've done a fair bit more. Um, just because it's not going to be that exciting to show you, oh look, I've woven another inch. Um, so yeah, so that will be coming up at some point. And that really is all my work's in progress now. Okay, so I aim to put a video out every weekend. It's usually on a Saturday morning, my time. So if you've enjoyed spending time with my company, like and subscribe and ding the bell and all that sort of stuff down there. Um, and let me know in the comments if you're taking part in Tour de Fleece or if you're more of a sort of armchair observer of these kind of events. That's cool too. Um, I will look forward to seeing you in the next video, which may or may not be the plying up of the John Arban to see if I can get a DK, the DK weight out of a spindle spin because uh, that's going to be getting filmed soon so keep an eye out for that and once a month I do a video like this where I round up everything and in between times it is more sort of this is how I do this particular project or this is how I do this particular skill and um, so yeah if that sounds like something you're interested in I look forward to seeing you in the next video and until then happy crafting and bye bye for now